Welcome back friends. Let's continue with the fibroids. We had seen the differential diagnosis, pregnancy and other pelvic masses. Let's see now when we are investigating we should exclude these other causes of abnormal bleeding because we know it's a hyperestrogenic condition and fibroid may be the cause of bleeding but there can be some associated conditions which are important to rule out before we come to the conclusion that the abnormal uterine bleeding is just because of fibroids. So which are these conditions which we need to exclude? Most important endometrial hyperplasia, endometrial or tubal carcinomas, uterine sarcoma, any ovarian carcinoma, polyps, adenomyosis, DUB, endometriosis or any source of exogenous estrogen the patient is on. So endometrial biopsy or DNC that is dilatation and curettage is an essential investigation in the evaluation of abnormal bleeding. So we have to exclude endometrial carcinoma if we are having this symptom in our patient. Now what are the complications of fibroids? In pregnancy as such, as we have already seen before, rate degeneration. In pregnancy, rate degeneration is very commonly seen in fibroids, usually in second or third trimester. But mid-pregnancy, this complication is seen. There is rapid increase in the size of the fibroid and then there is vascular deprivation or maybe thrombosis and that leads to ischemia, necrosis and degeneration. Causes pain and tenderness. It may initiate preterm labor. We have to manage it conservatively. With painkillers and if SOS she goes in preterm labor then tocolytics may be needed. After the acute phase of this pain is over, pregnancy will continue till term and I again want to insist on this point that the treatment for rare degeneration is conservative management and no surgery is necessary. What are the other effects of fibroid in pregnancy or on pregnancy rather? It can lead to infertility, we have already seen as a symptom. It may lead to abortion or preterm labor. There can be abrupt sure placenta because placenta if it get implanted on a fibroid as the residue is defective, this placenta may get prematurely separated during pregnancy and that may lead to abruption. There can be uterine inertia because in labor we want a coordinated myometrial contraction which will push the baby out. But if there are multiple fibroids, this myometrial contraction can be incoordinated or there can be absolute uterine inertia. Because of presence of big size fibroids, the baby may be in different mal presentations. It, may, it will just obstruct the baby to be in cephalic presentation because of the fibroid mal presentations or mal position of the babies are quite common. Sometimes a fibroid like this of bigger size can just lead to obstructed labor. It will not allow a baby's head to come down. So obstructed labor is also seen in big fibroids especially if they are located in the lower region. Cervical or isthmic myoma so during caesarean section, if the myomas are here, lower segment is the one where we do caesarean section surgery. So they may be in our surgical plane and that may have, that may cause problems. Usually in cervical fibroids, we have to do caesarean section and we have to find out a place to take the incision. In third stage of labor, these fibroids will avoid or will obstruct or will hamper the retraction of the uterus and thus it may lead to PPH that is third stage bleeding, postpartum hemorrhage. Usually the uterus retracts properly, but if there is presence of fibroid, there can be less retraction leading to PPH or sub-involution in the perpetual phase. Questions are asked on the effect of fibroid on pregnancy. So you have to remember these things. I'll revise again from infertility, abortions, abruption, uterine inertia, malpresentations or malpositions, obstructed labor, surgical difficulties or requirement of operative procedures more frequently and in third stage PPH and purpurium there can be sub-involution. What are the effects of pregnancy on fibroid? Usually no effect is seen on size but sometimes the tumor may grow and there will be red degeneration. Guys see red degeneration we are coming across this degeneration again and again and most of the MCQs are on this so please remember. There can be torsion of a pedunculated fibroid and infection in purpurium is very common. 
such kind of fibroid may get inf infected during puerperium and that may lead to puerperial sepsis. Complications seen in non-pregnant women. In non-pregnant women, there can be heavy bleeding which will lead to anemia or there can be urinary and bowel obstruction because of large tumor. Malignant transformation is quite rare. Urethral injury or ligation is a rec recognized complication of surgery of cervical myoma. Means we are doing a surgery and then these, organ these organs are getting damaged. There is no evidence that combined occipitals increase the size of myoma, but still they are not recommended as a treatment. Postmenopausal women on HRT must be followed up with pe pelvic examination and ultrasound every six monthly to keep a watch on what's happening with the fibroid she has. Now, what's the treatment of fibroid? As they are very common in women, we have to discuss the treatment in detail. Now, the treatment depends on what is the age of the patient. Now, this age parity decides whether she wants to continue her menstrual function, whether she wants to have children. Depending on that, we need to choose the treatment. It also depends, the treatment also depends on pregnancy status, whether she is pregnant or non-pregnant. What is the desire for future pregnancy? What is the general health? Is the fibroid really causing a symptom? This is the first question you should ask when you have to treat that fibroid. Sometimes USG reports, they just are written or typed in bold letters that 5 mm, 2 mm, 3 mm fibroids are seen. And it's in bold print. And patient reads it and get anxious that what mass or what tumor I have. But then you are the one you have to decide. If there are no symptoms, the fibroids are smaller in size, we don't have to do any kind of treatment for those fibroid. The treatment also depends on size of the fibroid and their location. What are the modalities of treatment? Medical management and surgical management. Medical, we can give NSAIDs, hormonal therapy, androgens, but has side effects. GnRH agonist and antagonist can be given. Antiprogestins and conservative management, we also have uterine artery embolization coming in a big way which will help us conserve the uterus. Medical management, the main aim or purpose of medical management is to decrease the blood loss till either we are planning for a surgery in that particular patient, we want her to have decreased blood loss and we want to build her hemoglobin to make her fit for the surgery. So during that time we can put this patient on medical therapy and this will cause decrease in bl blood loss and thus help us build her hemoglobin. Or medical management is also considered to decrease the size of the tumor. So before surgery, we want to decrease or shrink the myoma in size so that the surgery can be done easily and with less damage to the myometrium. So we can have medical management in the form of RU486 that is mifepristone or danazole or GnRH agonists like buciralin, nephrilin, goserelin, GnRH antagonists like centrirelix and ganirelix, or even Mirena. What are the emergency measures to be taken before the patient is getting ready? Sometimes if she has severe anemia, we may need to have blood transfusions to correct the anemia. Emergency surgery indicated in case only if the myoma is infected, there is acute torsion or there is intestinal obstruction. In those cases only we need emergency surgery. Otherwise, we don't need emergency surgery for myoma. Myomectomy is a surgery done where only the myoma is removed. Myoma ectomy means we are just removing the myoma, conserving the uterus. And this surgery is necessary in a patient who wants future pregnancies or she wants to continue her reproductive function. Then only the surgery is indicated and myomectomy is never ever done during pregnancy. It is not done during caesarean section. So myomectomy is contraindicated during pregnancy. What are the specific majors? Most cases are symptomatic so they need no treatment. Postmenopausal, they need no treatment. But as I said, if the patient is on HRT receiving estrogen, please do follow her up to see what are the changes the fibroid is going through. Don't forget the fibroids just because she is menopausal. Surgery is contraindicated in pregnancy. The only indication of myomectomy or far myomectomy in pregnancy is torsion of a pedunculated fibroid. 
as we said emergency surgery one of this indication if the fibroid undergoes torsion acute abdomen only in that case we have to otherwise no planned or pre planned surgery during pregnancy myomectomy is also not recommended during cesarean section because this thought comes to our mind that we are anyways opening the abdomen taking out the baby so why not fibroid as well but remember pregnant uterus has profuse blood supply it's congested fibroid has its own blood supply it's very difficult to take out that fibroid during pregnancy there would be huge blood loss so myomectomy is never to be done along with cesarean section pregnant women with previous multiple myomectomy especially during my myomectomy if the cavity was opened in that case we have to take care of that scar are you getting my point when we remove the myoma we take an incision on the uterine wall shell out the myoma from its false capsule and reclose it so reconstruct the uterus again while doing this if the cavity has been opened then such scar of myomectomy they have a risk of rupture during labor so if our patient has multiple myomectomy done before or if the cavity was open before then we have to do a planned cesarean section or a elective cesarean section for her at the term we are not supposed to let her go in labor so myomectomy scar is a, is considered as weak scar and she should be delivered by a cesarean section gnrh agonist they decrease the size of the myoma by 50% maximum this shrinkage is overall in 3 months treatment amenorrhea and hypoestrogenic side effects occur we all know there would be amenorrhea there would be hypoestrogenic side effects even it may lead to osteoporosis so gnrh agonists are indicated only when we want to stop or decrease the bleeding from myoma preoperatively to decrease the size so that the myomectomy can be easier or by decreasing the size if there is associated prolapse or we can do non descent vaginal hysterectomy we can avoid the scar so sometimes size of the uterus hampers vaginal hysterectomy so we can give this gnrh agonist decrease the size and can remove the tumor vaginally so decreasing the size in cases of myomectomy vaginal hysterectomy or even before laparoscopic myomectomy is the purpose we can achieve with these drugs pap smear and endometrial sampling for all patients with irregular bleeding is must to rule out ca cervix and ca endometrium endometrial hyperplasia anything so before we plan myomectomy for our patient what things we should do it's a planned surgery indicated only in women who have fibroids and they want to continue reproductive function not just menstrual reproductive they want to have children so first thing she can be put on medical management so the bleeding is less and correct her anemia by giving her iron so first thing is correction of anemia either transfusion or iron rule out other neoplasias by doing pap smear endometrial curettage dnc so rule out any other pathology again now we are taking out this fibroid thinking that this fibroid is the cause of her infertility or abortion so please rule out all the other causes of infertility and then we can proceed for myomectomy means we should do semen analysis and rule out male factor then only we should go ahead with the surgery and even other causes like pid or any other causes associated with fibroid but who are leading to infertility they should be ruled out so when we do the complete treatment then only the patient would have recovery from infertility or the infertility would be really treated in true sense prophylactic antibiotics she should be on surgery should be planned only in post menstrual phase to decrease the blood loss medical management will help us to decrease the size of the tumor there should be sufficient cross match blood available when we are posting the patient for myomectomy and during surgery we use ardal tourniquet or that victor boni's clamp or vasopressor because you all understand uterus having fibroids we are remove going to remove it so we have to stop the blood flow or decrease the blood flow going towards these myomas so we have these clamps victor boni's clamp to be applied at the uterine artery level we can have sponge holders applied at the ovarian arteries so decrease the blood loss or use tourniquet or have vasopressor uh, drugs injected in the serosa of the uterus so as to reduce the blood loss during myomectomy so myomectomy this was the preoperative preparation 
it's meant only for the symptomatic patient who wish to for continue or preserve fertility. There are methods, open myomectomy, where we will be having incision on the abdominal cavity and a surgery would be performed. Or if the myoma is of this type or this type, we can also go for in this type, vaginal myomectomy. Laparoscopic myomectomy, where the myoma will be removed through a laparoscope. You put a scope and then do the surgery. Even suturing everything, the laparoscopy skills are so good now that even big size myomas can be removed through laparoscopy. And hysteroscopic myomectomy is the other way for these kind of myomas. If the patient doesn't want to continue her fertility, she is either perimenopausal or who has finished her family and doesn't want to continue her menstrual function, then we can go for hysterectomy as a surgical management for fibroids. If the uterus is less around 12 week size or 14 week size, we can go for vaginal hysterectomy. If there is descent, if there is no descent, then non-descent hysterectomy. If the tumor is really big, we can go for abdominal hysterectomy. And the other mode of treatment for fibroid which is coming up in big way is uterine artery embolization. That's the future of management of fibroids where we will embolize this vessel or we embolize this vessel and the tumor shrinks in size. So we don't have to take out the whole organ just for the myomas. So this finishes our topic of fibroid and I hope this lecture helps you prepare this topic nicely. Thank you.